everyone, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. I wanted to make a really casual vlog today and share some thoughts with you on disc binding. I have posted some pictures on my social links of the books that I have so far. I've made a couple of Periscopes about it. By the way, if you are not following me on Periscope, it's the same thing as my Twitter username if you want to follow me there. I'm pretty new to disc binding and I just wanted to test it out before I made like an official DIY video on it. So I wanted to share some thoughts with you on my experience so far. Okay, so if you are asking what the heck is disc binding. Um, you're not alone. I asked that too and I didn't really know about it and I didn't realize that it had been around for a while. A lot of schools use it. I kind of think it's like if a three ring binder had a baby with spiral binding, then that baby would be disc binding. It has the function of spiral binding and also the function of a binder so you can open it to uh, remove the pages. You don't really open the binding, but it just gives you that function that you can remove the pages and switch them around if you want and then put them back together like a spiral bound book. And it's a great solution for single sheet binding. I know a lot of you ask how can I bind single sheets and I do have some tutorials on stitching single sheets and um, some of them like the stab bindings, they won't lay flat. Um, I do have one that does lay flat, but it is really time consuming. It looks really nice once it's done, but disc binding is another solution that you can try where your pages will lay flat and you don't have to sew them together and you can keep them as single sheets. So for the disc binding system, I am aware of like three major brands that make their own system and have a punch available for sale and have different covers and pages that you can buy. But as far as I understand or what I've read, you can't really um, combine the different brands with the different punches because each machine has their own set of unique holes, like a unique die, so their discs might not fit into those pages that is made by that punch, if that makes sense. I'm not entirely sure if you can combine them, but it's just what I've read so far. If you have tried any of the disc binding systems, I would love to know how your experience has been, if uh, you have used different brands, which one you like better, just anything that that you have to share about it. I would love to know your thoughts on it, so leave those in the comment below. I will also put links to all of the stuff that I have used so far in the description below, so that if anytime you see stuff in this video and you wanna know what it is and where to get it, I will put that in the description below, so just go and check that out. So this is the first one that I bought, and I just wanted to see if I actually liked disc binding. When I use spiral binding books, I usually turn them so that the binding is on the top, because I really like when the binding is out of the way of my hand, and I'm sure a lot of left-handers like that too, because the spine is always on this side, and when you're using your hand, you're like, ah. And it's just a little thing that bugs me personally when I flip the book around, so then the binding is on the side of my hand. So I always like to turn spiral-bound books like this, but with this, I can't do that because they don't make any books that are top-bound, and so I thought, well, oh, I could make my own, and that's when I. I got the punch. I got this punch for this system. This holy crap, oh, that scared me. Lock that baby in place. All right, <laughs> it's locked. It is kind of an investment. Uh, it was about like $42, I think. Um, but it is worth it if you know you're going to use it a lot and if it's going to help your notebook system. It says you can punch about eight sheets at a time, but I noticed because I used thicker paper, I was able to punch like four to five at a time. And if you're making a cover out of thin chipboard, of course it might take a little, a little few goes before it actually punches the holes, but it does punch through. And I did try the poly plastic inside of it and it did punch that again it just takes a couple of um, punches <laughs> and other brands of punches might be different this is the only one I've ever used so I don't really know how the other ones work but so far it's worked pretty well for what I need it for and for the discs that make up the binding the notebook that I bought came with these discs and you can change them out if you want a thicker notebook if you need to add more pages it will say on the package how many sheets it holds and that's true to the pages of the system if you buy the custom pages that are already made but I found that when you're making your own pages your paper varies in weight and it actually might be thicker than 
the systems pages and so I found that it didn't hold as many pages as it said. I got these other rings which hold more paper and they're a little over one inch I think and they do come in different colors. It just depends on what brand you use. Also depending on the brand they make different template pages. They have lined paper, planner pages, and just a lot of different things that you can add into the discs. And that brings me to another thing about this system is that the pages can only take so much of popping in and popping out and that's where it really does help to use a heavier weight of paper. But even that, going in and going out so much, it does kind of leave a little wear on the little edges of the holes. I usually only pop them out maybe like two or three times until I'm ready to archive them and never touch them again. It's not too bad, but it is something to keep in mind. The main thing I really liked about this system and wanted to use it again is that I could make my own pages and I could make different color pages. I could make lined paper and blank paper. And with all of those, I could move around the pages freely. I could move them in the back, move them in the front, and I could work on one at a time. And then if I wanted to maybe archive it in the back of the book, I could do that. And I think that really helps with my brain and my workflow because when I'm thinking of creative projects, my brain can be all over the place. And before I had a notebook where I would just write down ideas whenever they pop in my head. Sometimes I have like three to five ideas pop in my head and I just wanna write them down really quickly before I forget them. And then I wanna come back to them so I could like flesh them out. Um, with like a regular notebook, I found that when I do that, it's kind of like all over the place and then I just feel really scattered. So with this, if I'm thinking of an idea and I just write it out and sketch it out, I can actually come back to it and add a page to it and keep all of those pages that are on that idea together so that they're not all like scattered on different pages so I'm not like flipping back and forth to combine them together. I don't know if this sounds like really confusing to you but um, it really helps if your brain works that way when you just like want to get everything out onto pages but you don't want to feel really scatterbrained at the same time. So I have my blank pages where I can just feel free and open to sketch whatever I want or flesh out an idea and then I have my lined paper where I put more of a finalized version of that project. And if I want to take the page out while I'm working on the project to just have it alongside of whatever I'm working on, that I can do. So I don't have to have like a full open book and worry about getting the rest of the book dirty or messy or whatever I'm making at the time. And when I'm done with specific projects and I want them out of the way, I can combine those pages, put them in an order that I want and put them behind a divider, which I made out of cardstock and it's a little longer than the other pages. And I can just move on to the next pages that are on top of the notebook. Of course, this is just one way that you can use this disc binding system. This is the first time I've ever used anything in this order, like organized my thoughts this way, and it really has helped my brain. <laughs> So that is where I am with this disc binding system. The only thing now is that I need to make myself a hardcover and to figure out what material to make it out of. Because the chipboard so far, when the discs are in the little prong holes, the material is just too lightweight to hold up. So it's a good temporary solution, but I really want something more sturdy. On this cover, I tested if I could actually like glue chipboard to it and what glue worked. So that's what I'm working on now is just to figure out the best type of hardcover to make so that I can use the binding on top. I cannot find any brands that make a hardcover for top binding. I can only find side binding. If you know of any, leave it in the comment below. Or if you want to see a tutorial on how to make your own, I will make that for you because I need to make myself a hardcover for this. Hit that like button so I know you want to see that happen and be sure to subscribe for more tutorials. If you liked this video, you might like one of these right here. Links will be in the description below if you can't click on these annotations. And follow me on my social links if you want to connect more. I love talking to you guys on any of those social links. I will see you guys next time.